Hey, welcome to the next episode of my Blender tutorial series. In the last video, we went over some of the most common key bindings, including G, R, and S to move, rotate, and scale objects. We talked about using X, Y, and Z to lock axes, as well as shift X, Y, and Z to lock planes. You can use A to select all in most contexts. Keypad period will zoom in on the thing you're looking at. And we also went over the general layout of Blender, how to make a simple material with basic lighting. We learned how to take a cube and turn it into a plate and how to use modifiers to help with that. Finally, we talked about how to render the whole thing. In this episode, we're going to make an ingot. And in doing so, we're going to learn a couple of things about both edit mode and the outliner over here, which is currently set to view layer. Let's get into it. To start, we'll close this window, which is just a blender render window. When we need it again, it'll come back when we hit render. Okay, so we're currently in rendered view, which is just fine when we're trying to get to a final product, but when we're editing, we probably want to go into one of the more easier to render modes, which in this case is going to be solid. Now what we want to do is a little bit of organization. Up here, we have what's called the outliner. This helps us navigate all of the data blocks that are contained in Blender. Right now, we have it set to view layer. We can change what this pane looks like by clicking on the drop down here. As you see, we have all the other ones we have access to. The drop down next to it changes what mode it's in. Right now you can see the display mode is set to view layer. What this is, is basically a way of organizing all the objects inside of your Blender scene here. These collections are fairly similar to directories on hard drives. However, they're not exactly the same. One of the major differences is that sometimes objects can be in more than one collection at a time. This can be a little confusing if you just think of these like directories. Anyways, as you can see, we've got some stuff in our scene. The plane, which is our light source down here. The light, which is another light source. This was the point light we used in order to get this glow here. The cube itself, which is our plate. And the camera, which we'll use for rendering. Let's tidy this up a little bit. First, we're going to rename this cube Brass Plate. To change it, we can, of course, just double click. We can also use the key binding F2. Let's rename this Brass Plate. And as you can see, it puts it in alphabetical order. Because we're going to be making a lot of icons, I'm going to make one collection for each icon. This is my personal organizational preference. You don't necessarily have to follow this, but I can tell you that it helps keep things organized. To do this, I'll click on the collection. I'm going to go over to New Collection, which is this button here. I'm going to rename this Brass Plate. And I'm going to move this into that collection. Just click and drag, that'll do it. Next, because I want each icon to have individualized lighting, I'm going to actually take these lights and rename them and put them in there as well. And this one. I'm going to move these into here. And now they're all collected together. To take this one step further, let's make one more sub collection for the lighting. Let me make another sub collection here. So I'm going to click on this. The reason I'm clicking on these collections, by the way, is because it makes it the active collection, which guides Blender in placing objects when you create them. When I select this collection, if I create another one, it'll create that collection alongside it, oddly, not inside of it. Anyways, I'll create another collection here. Let's move it in. Let's rename it. Let's move the lights in there. Now we can turn these things on or off as we need. For example, I want to clear the scene and create a new cube. To do that, I'll come over to these icons here and I'll click on the eye here. That will turn everything off here. But I'm also going to click this camera. The reason is because this will make it not show up in renders. For example, if I left this on and then I hit render, you'll notice it's still showing something. The reason is because this is whether it shows up in the viewport and this is whether or not it shows up in renders. It does get a little annoying because you kind of have to keep both of those in your mind. However, it turns out to be very useful, especially when things get a bit more advanced. For right now though, we'll just turn this off and let's start making our ingot. To start off, I'll exit the camera. I'll press Shift A and that'll bring up the add menu. I'll go to mesh and we're going to add a cube. Now, how are we going to turn this into an ingot? Well, we need some more tools than what we had earlier. For example, if I press S, I can scale it and I can make something that looks kind of like a bar, but I can't really make an ingot out of this. The reason is that all the edits that I'm making, even if I'm locking it to a single axis, will affect everything on that axis the same way. Let me hide this real quick to give you an example. If I hit Shift A again, and I simply add a monkey, this is Suzanne, the Blender mascot. I'm gonna use it to really drive home the point of what an object mode edit looks like. So if I scale this in the X axis, 
all the pieces are scaled in on the x-axis. If I scale on the z-axis, it's all done that way, and I get this horrifying looking thing. Let me undo. The way I like to think about making object edits like that is that I'm taking a statue and essentially changing the scale of that statue without really changing the underlying structure of the statue itself. Let's get back to the thing we were dealing with. And let's turn this into an ingot. The way we edit the underlying structure is in what's called edit mode. To get there, we simply hit tab, and now we're in edit mode. Now we can grab onto individual parts and use the G key to move it around. Now, before we get too crazy here, let me go over the way this thing is built. There are three kinds of things you'll want to interact with. Verts, which are these guys here. Edges, which are the lines that connect them. And faces. Now, the way I'm swapping between these three different sub modes, I'm just pressing one for verts, two for edges, and three for faces. You can also look up here and see that there are three modes here, vertex, edge, and face. You can even, if you hold shift, have two modes at the same time, although I should admit I rarely use this. Generally, I just pick one or the other, and I almost never click on this thing. Indeed, I only use the key bindings one, two, and three to get around. Now there's some good news. All the key bindings that I taught you in the previous episode apply here. So if I select one vertex and I hit G, I'm grabbing and moving. I can press X and now it's moving on the X axis. I can press Z and it'll move up and down, so on and so forth. So let's think about what an ingot should look like. I'm gonna select everything, scale it in on the X axis, scale it on the Z axis, take it in a bit more. Okay, that's probably a good starting point. Now what I wanna do is I wanna make this top smaller. To do that, I can scale it and then bring it down. And I get something that's vaguely ingot shaped. However, this isn't quite perfect. Let me look at it from above and you can see why it looks a little bit off. This should probably be more narrow, so let's scale it in the y-axis. And that looks pretty good. Let me select everything so I can move it up. Let me take a look from the side. Zoom in. This doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer the better. All right, that's our ingot. To get out of edit mode, we'll hit tab. If tab doesn't get you out of edit mode, if you press and hold tab, you'll notice you get a pie menu here, and you can go between edit and object mode. Don't worry about what the rest of these are for right now. We'll probably take a look at a few of those during this tutorial series, but they represent other things you can do with meshes. For right now, we'll just be going back and forth between object and edit mode. Let's put some finishing touches on this, and we'll make some further distinctions between object and edit mode as we do so. Let's select the ingot, go to the modifiers tab, add the bevel modifier. Right now you can see it's got one segment, but if I increase it to two, you can see there's two now. If I increase it to three, you can see there's a third. Let's take the amount and we're going to draw it in. I'll click and drag, and we're gonna hold shift so it's not so sensitive. And that looks pretty good to me. Now let me come over to the viewport, right click on the object, and you'll see I have the option to shade smooth. This is where I wanna make a distinction. If I was in edit mode and I right click, you'll notice that the shade smooth option is all the way down here. This option is a little different. However, this can confuse a first time user. What I want you to notice is that this right click menu is different in edit mode than it is in object mode. You can see what mode you're in up here at the top of the menu. Sometimes. Uh, in this particular instance, the top is right here. The reason I have options up here is because I have some add-ons that I've enabled. Just understand that the name of the menu is here. Whether or not these should be here, well, you'll have to talk to the mod makers themselves. However, if I go from face mode to edge mode, you'll notice edge shows up here. And if I go to vert mode, you'll see vertex here. So just keep that in mind as you look through these menus. Another thing I want you to notice is that there are many faces here, but in edit mode, I can't select them. If I go to face mode, select this face, you'll notice I just have the four edges. Let me zoom in. Why can't I select these? Well, the reason is these faces are coming about because of the modifier. Sometimes it may be helpful to see them and sometimes not. The important thing to know is I can edit the underlying mesh and these things will update live. So if I go to vertex mode, grab this vertex and move it along the X axis, you'll notice the bevel faces are live updated. Let me undo that. A good way to think about this is to remember that you're editing the underlying mesh here, then that mesh gets modified by the object properties, then that mesh is being fed into the top of the modifier stack. Then these modifications happen, and what ends up being rendered is what you're seeing here. 
So it goes mesh from edit mode, object properties, modifier stack, and then that's what you see. You can control whether or not these are visible. These three toggles here dictate where the modifier can be seen. In this one, it's edit mode. If I uncheck that, you'll notice it just shows up like the normal mesh, but if I go out of edit mode, it comes back. This is the viewport mode, which toggles it on and off for all viewport modes, but doesn't influence rendering. Rendering is controlled with this icon here. If you turn this off, it'll show up in the edit mode, but it won't show up in the render. If you want to be able to edit those faces for some reason, you can bake these into the mesh. One thing to keep in mind if you do this is there's no going back. Well, except for the undo key, but that option goes away when you close Blender. If you open the file later, you can't go back. Right now, if I edit the mesh, these changes will update, but if I bake these in, that won't be the case. To bake it, you simply come over here to the dropdown and you'll click on the apply button. But wait a second, why can't I click on it? The reason is because I'm not in object mode. So let's do that. I'll go to object mode. Now I can click this thing again and hit apply. Now, when I go back to edit mode, you see I've got these faces which can be edited. However, I can't change the bevel again. This is now permanently part of the mesh. I'll undo my way back. Understanding when you would want to bake this as part of the mesh is something you'll have to get through experience. If I know I need to copy this modifier to other objects so I have a sense of consistency, or if I'm still playing around with the basic shape of the object, but I know I'm gonna have this bevel on it at some point, then I'll usually leave them as live modifiers. Indeed, for maximal flexibility, I would suggest favoring live modifiers, but not always. There are times when I'll use a modifier to do a one-time operation that's just too clunky to do by clicking around, procedurally duplicating an object, procedurally creating some kind of noise, that sort of thing. But as I said earlier, experience is a great teacher, and as you get that experience, you'll figure out what workflows work for you. All right, let me go to Shade Smooth, and let's apply the material. I'll click here. We're not going to make a new material because we want this to be a brass ingot, and we've already made a brass material. Let's click on this. We can't see it because we're not in render mode, so let's go there. And as usual, we need to light this. Let's look through our camera by pressing keypad zero. Let's rotate this so we get a better shot. I'm gonna rotate on the Z axis. I'm going to scale it up. I'll rotate again, scale up again. All right, personally, I don't like going right to the edges. There are times when I might need this space for something else, but I don't like to be too far in because as with photography, if you can, fill the frame. Let's light this. In order to do that, we're going to make some stuff over here. So let's actually take a second and do some organization. I'll rename this Brass Ingot. I'll make a new collection. Rename it. Put this in there. Make another sub collection. We'll call this one Lighting. And we'll make sure this collection is selected so that when we create new lights, they'll be in there. Let's create our key light. To do so, I'll create a plane with Shift A, go to Mesh, Plane. I'm going to move this back on the Y axis. I'll rotate on the X axis by 90 degrees, rotate X 90. I'll make it wider in the X axis. And I'll bring it back a little further so that it's out of the frame. Now what I need to do is to give this a texture. So we'll go New. Let's give this material a name. We're going to call it Brass Ingot Key Light. It's using the principled BSDF, which means we can come down here to emission. The color of the light it's emitting is white. We can see that the strength is zero, which is why it's not shiny. Let's set that to one. And immediately we get some light. However, this is clearly not enough. In fact, we may need a few of these kinds of lights. So we can do this in a couple of ways. One is I can move this around. I'm using Shift Z in order to move it around in the XY plane without going up or down. I'm gonna add in another one, so I'm going to duplicate this. In order to do that, I'm going to use Shift D. I'll again press Shift Z so I stay in the XY plane. Move this over here. I'm also going to rotate this. I'll hit R or Z. And indeed, I'll rotate the first one and bring it closer. That looks pretty good to me. We'll probably play with this a little. Going back and forth is definitely part of this process. Let's create a point light. So I'll hit Shift A again. I'll get into light. Click point. Right now it's in the origin, which is under the ingot. So I'll hit G, Z. As you can see, it emerges from the ingot. I'll move it over by pressing G and Shift Z. I'll move it up some, move it back some, and I will make it brighter. 
Now, I'm just gonna play with this until I get something I like. Okay, I'm not perfectly happy with this, but it's good enough for the tutorial right now. Let's solve the problem of these things being in the frame. Thankfully, there's a toggle for this. Let's head over to the outliner. We'll click on this dropdown. And this brings up different filters. There's all sorts of stuff we can click on here, but the ones we're looking for are this one, indirect only, and this one, which is holdout. We'll use holdout in another video, but let's enable it for now. You'll notice this adds a couple of toggles here. Let's select the brass ingot lighting. Now we've got this collection selected, and we'll set this to indirect only and watch what happens. Ah, they vanished, but their light did not. What's happening is that only the light that is indirectly coming from that object is rendering. The best way to think about this is to remember that Cycles is a ray tracing engine. This is meant to model the physical world. Colored light comes from sources, that bounces off of colored objects, and when those light rays hit the camera, they get rendered. Just like if they hit your eye, they get seen. The direct light from an object are the rays that hit the object and then the camera. The indirect light hits something else before it gets to the camera. The fact that it's hitting something else is what makes it indirect. In this case, our something else is the ingot. Anyway, I can still select it. It's still here. And this can be kind of a pain in the neck when you're editing stuff. But the benefit is that you can actually have this in your scene overlapping and you can use its lighting without having to see the object itself. It's a very handy little trick. Let's name these things. This will be Brass Ingot Key Light. This will be Brass Ingot Key Light 2. This will be Brass Ingot Highlight. And now we can hit render. F12 is how we do that. And boom, you have a nice brass ingot. Let's save this by going to image, save as, and we can name this brass ingot. Make sure it's set to RGBA, color depth is eight, and we're all set. So let's recap. We've learned about edit mode versus object mode. We can get there by pressing tab. We learned how to get between the three modes here, which are vertex, edge, and face by pressing one, two, and three. We learned that we're able to use all of the key bindings that we learned earlier to manipulate these objects. We learned about the different ways of viewing the modifiers, both in edit mode and in object mode. We learned how to use these toggles on modifiers to change how it looks in both edit and object mode. We learned how to use the outliner to organize stuff. And in the end, we got an icon for an ingot. In future episodes, we'll clean up this texture and make it look more interesting than just a flat gold surface. In the future, we'll learn more stuff about edit mode and how you can make even more intricate objects. We'll also learn how to upgrade the texture from just a flat gold surface here. And we'll learn some tricks with the lighting. Anyways, I hope you got something out of this. Thank you so much for watching. Be good to each other, take care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next one.